Great. Well, um, Bob Wiseman here, the chair, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome the last speaker of the day, Angela McAllister. And she comes to us from the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity. And she's going to talk to us about the Canadian Cybersecurity Framework. Okay. Uh, she's right now the academic sector lead at the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity. And she engages with organizations and associations to build strategic partnerships and define tailored projects to advance the Canadian academic sector's uh, cybersecurity posture. In her role, Angela seeks to raise awareness on the cybersecurity threats affecting Canadian academic institutions and to promote the services and guidance available from the Cyber Centre. Prior, she was held positions at the uh, Communication Security Technologist, Information Technology Security Analyst, and Information Technology Technical Writer. She's also a professor of communications, electronics, and computer applications at two Ontario universities. She's currently studying to obtain a Master of Technology Management. Now, without further ado, over to you, Angela. Thank you, Bob. Um, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today about the Canadian Cybersecurity Skills Framework. Um, let's move on to the agenda. So I'm going to be talking to you today about the Cybersecurity Skills Framework, but I'm going to start with just a little history of the Cyber Center and where we came from, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the skills gap and what's happening around that, as well as I'm going to talk to you about the academic outreach and cyber skills development program that is currently underway at the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. So let's just take a look through a little bit of history. So the Canadian Center of Cybersecurity, we call it the Cyber Center. It's a business line of the Communications Security Establishment, which is a federal organization that not many people have heard about um, until most recently in the last several years. But we did celebrate our 75th anniversary last year. Now, the communications security establishment was born from World War II code-breaking efforts by the communications branch of the NRC. And you may know of British efforts to do that. You're probably maybe even a history buff, or maybe you saw um, the movie The Imitation Game. But either way, it's a little known fact that similar efforts were going on here in Canada as well. After the war and into the Cold War, those efforts continued. And in 1975, the communications security establishment was formed, operating under the National Defense Act. And its main purpose was to collect signals intelligence. But as the world became, um, as the world became more, the NRC is the National um, Research Center, sorry. As the world became more and more digital, um, CSC's work began to focus more and more on internet communications. And so while most of the inner, most of the uh, organization was still focused on the top secret work of gathering signals intelligence, more and more the government, the federal government was realizing and recognizing that there was a lot of work to be done, not only to defend GC networks, Government of Canada networks, but the digital infrastructure of the critical, or critical infrastructure network networks in Canada as well. And it was becoming apparent that we couldn't do this behind closed doors. We couldn't share our knowledge and our expertise if we didn't step out in the light to share it uh, with people. So we had to do that. And from that recognition, the <clears throat> Canadian Center for Cybersecurity was formed in October of 2013. Um, and it was what we had done is taking, taking our IT security group and use that and combine that with the SOCs from uh, Shared Service Canada and incident responders from public safety. And we made the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. Now the CSC headquarters in Ottawa is the building on the left and the Cyber Center, which is also in Ottawa is the building on the right. They're actually not that far from each other. Now the Canadian Center, um, the Cyber Center uh, is Canada's 
federal authority on cybersecurity and the government's source of uh, expert advice and guidance and service for support in that cybersecurity. So in the same sense that you would consult Environment Canada to see if there's going to be a tornado um, or Health Canada for the food guide, you would consult the cyber center with any, or the government of Canada would consult the cyber center with any operational questions about cybersecurity. And it was in 2019 that new legislation was passed that allowed us for the first time to really Really reach beyond supporting Government of Canada networks and offer that same advice, guidance, and services to the 16 designated critical infrastructure sectors in Canada. Academia is the 11th critical infrastructure. And so our main goal is national level income or incomes, <laughs> outcomes, issues that affect all Canadians and Canadian sovereignty, um, national security and prosperity. And it is to protect the information of Canadians and the information systems of importance to Canada, those systems that allow our society and our economy to function and flourish. And in that vein, we don't um, compete with any commercial um, capability that's out there. We only aim to complement what is available and in hopes that we can share and contribute and help all of Canadian critical infrastructures. And we know that cybersecurity is a team sport, and you're going to see this on one of my next slides. Um, and we're not trying to be all things to all people. We can't possibly do that, but we want to be on the team. So we are here to help and we work really hard to help our critical infrastructure partners. And so now let's go on to the skills gap because we all know that there are a shortage of cybersecurity professionals and workers in Canada. And now look at this slide and start to read the numbers and remember that or remember, you don't know, but I'll tell you that I put this slide together about two years ago. Everything except for the um, line that says there are currently 50,695 unfilled positions today. Um, I updated that number from the Tech Nation job avail availability heat map um, Monday or Tuesday of this week. And that's how many positions were available across Canada in the domain of cybersecurity. And so when you read that a high percentage of employers have reported a shortage of workers and a high, a quite a large percentage of organizations believe that this shortage of workers has caused measurable damage in terms of money, in terms of reputation, in terms of opportunities, to their organizations. And there's lots of numbers out there. You can go and search and you'll find different, maybe different numbers, um, but it doesn't matter what the exact numbers are. What matters is that the demand is acute, it's immediate and it's growing. And until we remove all those adjectives, um, we won't have done our job. And so the academic outreach and the cyber and cyber skills development team at the cyber center is working to remove those adjectives and make everybody's life a little bit easier, right? And so we know that while cybersecurity is predominantly a computer based uh, based discipline with the um, majority of education and training programs technically oriented, the field has really evolved to become interdisciplinary and include aspects of business and law and policy, psychology, ethics, um, risk management, statistics, data science, finance, all of those uh, programs produce graduates that can support our technical computer scientists, computer engineers, software engineers, electrical engineers, our designers, our network designers, or uh, software developers. All of the um, 
are a lot of the arts programs, the social sciences and law, those are very important supporting roles in the cybersecurity profession. And I'll talk about that again in a little bit, um, a little bit later. But I want to point out that I put on psychology and I put on philosophy. And a lot of people think, look at me like I have three heads when I say, when I put philosophy and psychology on the list and I, and I tell them it is absolutely important to involve our philosophers and our psychologists into cybersecurity, into the technological world so they can start to think about future problems and look at our uh, technologies with a different set of eyes and a different view and a different perspective to make to maybe help us determine how we can make our systems more robust and how we can train our workers to be more cyber aware and more cyber secure. Um, I mean, it's obvious why ethics and legal and policy, uh, people would want to know about cybersecurity and how they can be good supporting roles, um, but others are not as obvious. And we have to start to think outside of the box and encourage other disciplines to teach cybersecurity to their students, um, but at the right level and at the appropriate amount of knowledge and skills that they need to have. Um, one of the things that we have noticed um, in doing our work is, um, is that the number and the quality of the courses and programs that are currently being offered by universities and colleges is expanding and it's getting better. However, the thing that we are noticing is that most of the programs are in technical departments and have an operational focus and don't have as much cybersecurity specific content as we'd like. Um, even our engineers need to start being educated on the legal and the policy implications of the work that they are doing and maybe even the ethical implications. They need to understand risk management as well as a business student would want to understand risk management. And we have to start um, trying to decrease the gender gap in STEM. If you look at some of the numbers in STEM, it'll say, well, there's a 19, um, no, it, it, general STEM programs, 51% female. And it doesn't look like there's a gender gap. But when you just start digging deeper into that number and you get into this, the engineering or the technology focus, you're looking at a 19% enrollment of female students. And a lot of female students end up either changing their discipline or changing their career after graduation. And so there's another role in there for our philosophy, our psychology, our communication students to help us determine how we can even fix the gender gap. So now let's talk about whether or not our graduates have the skills. Um, if you're looking at ISACA, um, not really, they don't. The 23% of employers or IT employers believe that students have the skills to enter the cybersecurity workforce. That's a pretty low number. And 80% of employers are not putting the value on a degree that used to be put. They're looking to certifications. They're looking for hands-on experience. Um, and students are lacking that. They're lacking that practical knowledge that lets them understand how cybersecurity integrates into system design, into device design, um, into, into the architecture in various different ways. And you can see that this week, um, two important news articles, my power, I'm having a brownout, so I hope I don't uh, get hit with this storm here. Um, to the, there's two articles that came out very recently, um, one about <clears throat> the Apple M1 processor that has a design hardware design flaw in it, as well as I believe it was AMD and Intel, I can't remember both of them, um, that have power cycling, um, not issues, 
Um, but you can watch the power that's being used in these processors to bigger, be able to figure out the encryption that's going on. And so we've got to take a look at everything that's going on, not just how do we secure our network? How do we set up our stock, right? We have to instill this layer, layered approach of cybersecurity into, its, into our students. Um, the, 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 uh, the discipline, it is still developing. And right now it's being driven by workforce demands, right? And so it, it makes sense that it's operational. A lot of the requirements and the teachings are operational as it is being driven by the workforce. Um, but um, there's a lot of information that we need to also deliver to our graduates in order to make them um, give them the opportunities to get the roles. I don't know if anybody here uh, follows Reddit, but I do follow a subreddit called cybersecurity. And I do see a lot of posts on there about people looking for jobs and saying, where is this job shortage? I can't, I can't get into the field. I can't get interviewed. How do I do this? So we've got to really take a look at what is it our students are lacking when they graduate and what can we give them? And so this is where this Canadian uh, cybersecurity skills framework comes into play. And so oh, my screen isn't changing. Hold on. There we go. Um, what we've learned is that Canadian businesses and industries are struggling to meet their cybersecurity needs. They're struggling to hire the right people with the right skills and the right knowledge and the right um, abilities to be able to perform um, the way they wanted to. And so there are four key workforce development challenges that are outlined in the cyber skills framework. Um, and one of those is generating and retaining cybersecurity talent to meet the needs of the labor market, right? Um, another one of those is ensuring that contributing technical and non-technical roles have that required knowledge, skills, and abilities that we've educated our finance individuals, the people that hold the purse and determine where the money is spent, that they're aware of the risk that cybersecurity poses, not just to the network, but to their data um, and to their whole business operation, even the reputation of their organization. We also need to be responsive to the changing technology landscape because it is changing. Um, Internet of Things devices are opening up a whole new world of vulnerabilities for malicious actors to take advantage of. Data science and machine learning, um, it, this is opening up a lot of doors. They are great doors for innovation. We've never been a more innovative society, um, but we have to think about how do we secure those devices and how do we design security in from the beginning of the, the process into our devices? How do we um, ensure that our supply chain takes into account cybersecurity controls to make sure that the devices that we choose to install in our networks or use in our offices are well designed and come from a place that are um, that doesn't introduce any other vulnerabilities. And so the Canadian cybersecurity skills framework, um, it does, it aligns very well with the robust and detailed US NICE framework, right? Um, but what we do in, is, in it is we provide an organizational security lens and we address the unique Canadian labor market because the NICE framework was originally developed for the Department of Defense in the US. And they have, I don't know how many different roles, maybe 300 different roles in Canada, we are what, a ten, a 10 times smaller? Are they 10 times larger than us? Um, so our workers tend to wear more hats and they tend to specialize less. So the framework really is based on a Canadian view of the jobs that are available and the skills that are required in 
our labor and our workforce right now. Um, we've broken it down into four categories. Um, it's been structured to provide this role-based perspective on cybersecurity curriculum learning requirements and outcomes that contribute to the specific technical and non-technical organization roles. The role-based model categorizes cybersecurity workforce roles into the four main functions based on desired knowledge, skills, and abilities without neglecting that adjacent or contributing work that allows our cyber analysts or our specialists to do their job as best as they can. And so as cybersecurity is an interdisciplinary course of study, both computer-based and business-oriented disciplines are part of the focus in an attempt to provide that more comprehensive understanding of the cybersecurity workforce and the field, the demands of the field. So we've divided it up very similar um, in a very similar manner to the NICE framework. Um, I think you'll find different wording in, in the govern and support category of this uh, particular diagram. But I just wanted to take you for um, a minute and take a look at the different roles that we've described. So in our, in our framework, we've got 54 roles that we describe. Now, each of those roles can have multiple different titles, um, different organizations called their cyber analysts, different things, right? Um, so take the title of the jobs with a grain of salt, but basically what you can see is that in the oversee and govern, um, category. These are very important roles to ensure that the rest of the work can happen and it can happen efficiently and appropriately and, and that the skills and the knowledge can be that our cyber workers, our cyber professional needs can be elevated through our, our, our leadership, right? Our legal and policy advisors, our planning and policy analysts, our human resources department. So they know what uh, skills to look for, what certifications are important, which degrees are important to bring in for future candidates, right? When you take a look at the design and development role, you're gonna see architects um, that design our networks, right? You're gonna see operational technology engineers and tech and technologists that will help design our OT environments. You also look at that research and development part, which is key in tackling future issues that are gonna come up because this is an ever-changing landscape and the smarter we get, the harder our adversaries work at breaking up what we've done, right? So that research and development section is really important. And you've got a whole bunch of different software developers and assessors, evalu test and evaluation staff, our supply chain analysts, when we're choosing which parts to use to put our systems together, or when we're de designing a device, uh, which integrated circuits are we gonna use to help us uh, develop those devices? And so it's very important that we start at the beginning and we look and we train our cybersecurity professionals to look at security as an onion and start at the beginning and develop it securely so that our people who operate and maintain that network can add on different layers of security as they go. We need to train them, our system administrators and our network administrators, um, our identity access management professionals or, and our privacy specialists to understand really what they are protecting and what security controls they should be looking for to make sure and ensure that they those in, the controls are implemented properly, that they're, they're selecting the right uh, options on their, um, on their network devices. And protect and defend, 
that is your last, right? That is the final layer of the onion that really takes a look at where are our vulnerabilities? Where could someone get into our system? How can we stop that? What mitigations can we put in place to now reduce our risk into a little bit of a residual risk? And then are we happy with that residual risk that we've gotten left over now that we've designed a secure network, we've operating it properly, we've got all our settings set up, but adversaries are still trying to get in. So how are they trying and what are they doing and how can we close that door in their faces, right? And there's a lot of adjacent roles that cover, that go into supporting the designers, the maintainers, the protectors, and the defenders. And that's my next slide are the, I want to uh, just impart the importance of the cybersecurity generalist role, right? These people are predominant in small, medium organizations, and sometimes in a lot of other large organizations. So the security generalist within an organization setting is typically not a specialist in any security area, but they are often responsible for personnel security, physical security, contract security, loss prevention security activities, as well as, as cyber security. And it's not uncommon, for example, for the CEO or the CIO or CFO um, to assume, um, or managers in general, to assume kind of a generalist role because the common tasks there include assessing a current cybersecurity uh, posture, right? Determining and identifying what are the organizational risks, what are the technical and non-technical cybersecurity controls that we can put in place, and you know, brokering meetings between technical experts or on and non-technical experts to uh, improve the security of our systems. Um, our generalist roles are going to be uh, super helpful in developing our cybersecurity plans and policies and how do we handle certain events and what do we think about allowing our staff to access social media on our um, corporate network, right? And so there's a lot of, they can even coordinate cybersecurity response during an incident. So they are really, they underpin the effectiveness of our cybersecurity workforce. But they also need knowledge, skills, and ability to support this decision-making and action and coordination and identification of risks that they're doing. And it's unlikely that they'll have any extensive cybersecurity training or education. So we need to offer them learning opportunities so that they can attain the competencies that they need to do their job. They don't need to know everything about cybersecurity. They need to know what they need to know to ensure that our designers and protectors and operators and maintainers can do their job as effectively as possible, right? And so the cybersecurity generalist role is super important and is often overlooked in within organizations. And so I also want to point you now towards the UK's CYBOC, the Cybersecurity Body of Knowledge. And so when you're designing programs and you're thinking about what knowledge do I want, what topics do I want to cover, um, you can go to the CYBOC. They've really organized the uh, cybersecurity knowledge into 19 broad knowledge units. The, the document is like 800 pages, but it's a great read. I think I'm at like page 200 and I've skimmed through some of the other ones, right? But take a look at all the different um, topics that they cover, right? And so it's a great 
great place to go for reference to make sure that you are including everything that, that you need to know. Um, and so how do you create cyber professionals? But so that's gonna depend. What roles do you see your students graduating into, right? What are gonna be the, those learning outcomes? What abilities will your do you want your students to have when they graduate so they can focus or so they can be employable in the roles, the job roles that you see them undertaking, right? And so there's a lot of questions to be answered before you design a program. Um, so we have to really think about what's the outcome? Where are they gonna go? Where do we see them? And do we see them as operators, designers, maintainers, protect and defend? They can't be a um, specialist in every domain. It's impossible. You've got to pick one. Your students have got to pick one and they've got to run with it, right? And we've also got to make sure we put a lot of importance on the adjacent skills of our engineers and our scientists so that they know how to communicate the importance of cybersecurity to managers, to the people that control the purse and the money and the spending, right? So depending on what you want to create, um, you can go and use the cybersecurity skills framework to help you. What are the roles that we most see in Canada? What knowledge, skills, and abilities do people need to perform in those roles? That's where the Canadian cyber, uh, cybersecurity skills framework are really going to help you determine what type of graduate you want to produce. And once you've determined that, now you know you can use the CYBOC and you can go there for a little bit more guidance on what you should be building into your programs, the type of courses and topics that will maybe be covered, right? We've also importantly got to uh, put in co-op programs because the feedback I've received from students and from people trying to get into the field is they don't have that hands-on experience. So got to put a little bit of focus there as well. And when you're designing your program, um, I'm going to, I'm running out of time. So I'm going to skip one slide. Oh no, this is good. Okay. Um, uh, when you're designing your program, the academic outreach and cyber skills development team is there to help you. We and at the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity, we work with academia on many different levels. We work with the CISOs, the IT managers, the CIOs to help secure academic networks. We work with the applied researchers and foster innovative services. Um, we have a co-op office and we hire, I don't know, 200 co-ops a year We and from all over Canada. Um, so we've got lots of places to put your co-op students. Um, but the academic outreach and cyber skills development team, they work with academic institutions, ministries, professors, curriculum developers, deans to help expand the cybersecurity knowledge. And they've got really a couple of goals. And the first one is to support the development of cybersecurity in the academic sector. And that is why the Canadian uh, Cybersecurity Skills Framework um, is so important. Um, they're also very high on promoting the integration of cybersecurity into Canada's education system. And uh, last year, or the year before, I can't remember, um, where the team was very successful in helping um, ESDC or Employment Social Development Canada update Canada's skills for success and add in some cybersecurity content into that digital skill. So they're working really hard to influence the K-12 sphere so that the uh, high school graduates, when they get to your program, have more knowledge than they currently have on cybersecurity and protecting themselves on the internet. And hopefully that'll make your life a little bit easier when you're designing programs. 
Now the academic outreach and cyber skills development team also has a curriculum review service where you can submit your um, your programs, your future programs, or your augmented programs to the Cyber Center, who will distribute that internally to a team of experts that will return some advice to you on your program and on your particular courses. What we need from our academic institutions is obviously the outline of the program, the descriptions of the different courses, and what job roles you see your graduates walking into when they graduate, right? And with that information, we'll take it back and we will give you tailored advice on your program so that you can develop um, programs that will help your students get hired and have less difficulty breaking into the workforce. We also um, participate as a guest speaker, as you can see, and um, we are going to be starting very soon to offer an outreach newsletter. Um, and we participate in program advisory committees at different universities and colleges across Canada. We also offer a cybersecurity course for educators. Now, this is more meant for educators from the sixth grade six to grade 12 high school kind of level um, to learn more about what is cybersecurity? What, is, what are you talking about? What is malware? What are our adversaries? What are our threats? Why is this important, right? And the cybersecurity course for educators will also go through um, free resources that we found on the web that we think will be useful to educators when uh, writing their lessons plans or developing activities for their students to teach them more. And if you want to see any of our publications, um, you can go on our website, which most recently had a new redesign, it looks very pretty, and you can go into the academia um, section and you can find the guide, uh, a guide on certifications in the field of cybersecurity, um, a post-secondary like um, it's a student guide, a student career guide that's aimed at students in grade 11 and 12 and those that are switching their career and want to move into cybersecurity. And there's also a lot of research. And if you want to reach our academic outreach and cyber skills development team, the email is here on the on this web page for you. And I'll just leave it up here for a little bit because. Um, this is the end of my presentation. And so I am free to take any questions that you may have. Thank you ever so much. Uh, the, the, this was great, Angela. I really appreciated that. Okay, okay we're starting to get questions. Here we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, okay. First one. Okay, and I'll just, um, sorry, mm -hmm. just go answer now. Um, whoops, there we go. What role do business analysts play in terms of having the right complementary skill sets in an organization for cybersecurity? I know the IIBA now has a specialty for cybersecurity analysts, uh, analysis. I don't know uh, if you're business analysis. That. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the Institute. For, yes. So we hire a lot of business analysts at the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity, actually, and they work very closely um, with many of our teams. Um, in our partnerships team, for example, um, we have business analysts uh, working there to help us determine which projects that we should take on, what would be most valuable to the ecosystem, to the center, to our partners, right? And so we do have hire a lot of business and they do a lot of research for us. They can help us figure out what are the key problems that the, for instance, the health sector is facing in Canada. What are the key cybersecurity issues and how can we help them? For the health, it's funding. So this is hard, but they will do a lot of research and help us out a lot so that we can focus our cyber efforts, um, our technical knowledge where we uh, can contribute most. Great. Yeah. I think, the, I, I think it's a great addition to the IIBA offering that they're special that they're, they're addressing that. 
Um, like everyone else, is the cyber center falling behind in hiring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think that uh, pretty well, you know, yeah. come on down. <laughs> and um, here we go. Does the cyber center help other departments fill their cybersecurity positions? No, we don't help other people fill their positions. Um, they, everybody has their own HR departments that can do it. Um, but yeah, so no. But you provide advice to sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What the HR folks should be uh, looking yeah. at. Well, but, yeah, and we help develop the Canadian Cyber uh, Skills Framework as part of that effort as well. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'll certainly uh, go through it. Uh, like I said, I'm teaching enterprise architecture, and it's a key component of that now. And privacy is also another issue. But the cyber skills framework does not address privacy, right? Um, there will be, I think, privacy and ethics analyst role in it. Okay, or, great. Yeah. No, I just want to know that was uh, and, uh, basically covered. Well, listen, Angela, uh, thank you ever so much. I'll let you get to your students. Okay. We're probably <laughs> chomping at the bit. Uh, I know mine always are, and um, yeah. you know this sort of thing. But it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's wonderful what you're doing over at the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. Uh, certainly, ITSEC was a uh, you know mm -hmm. a branch of the C CSE, but now I think that you know the roles are diverging. Uh, yeah. You have different foci, and um, so, anyways, I wish you all the best. I think what you're doing you. is really valuable for Canadian society. And um, certainly through the university and uh, through the professional associations, we will promote the work that you're doing. Thank you very thanks much. Again. So thanks again. And uh, we can meet sometime in the next two weeks or something like that. Yeah. And basically take a look for how U of O can basically, or some part of U of O, because I know U of O right now has got the cyber range. That was a good presentation that was given by uh, Professor Jordan. And, um, but anyways, we'll basically yeah. we'll, we'll, just, we'll stay in you, touch. You've got my email, so reach out. I'm always there. Say. Okay, well, <laughs> well, you take care. And you, wish you all the best. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye. Now, to, to all of you, it's not over, okay? I know the conference is over, and I'm absolutely delighted. Thank you ever so much for attending. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a workshop on the open source journal uh, for digital transformation in government. Uh, if you're interested, uh, okay, sorry guys. Um, is a cybersecurity as yeah yes? Um, there was one question here. I'll I'll just um, okay and um, I can answer to this one. Okay, is that as president of ISACA Ottawa, I'll definitely get them to speak, and we'll take a look at a partnership between ISACA Ottawa and the. Um, uh, and it's Canadian Center for Cybersecurity. Okay, for that. Um, let's take a look, just anything else that I can maybe put my, stick my oar in. Um, for students in general computer science programs, what kind of certificates would you recommend to get? Um, there are several out there. I'm sorry, I work in the, the, the field of cybersecurity as well. Um, there are several that you can get. Um, I will contact her. Uh, I, I will. That's one reason I'm reaching out to her. And uh, through ISACA, I'm going to sit there and start making available uh, to all attendees uh, with respect to what the certifications are if you and also contact information, because I know other people are asking for contact information. To be quite honest with you, um, I would, whoops, sorry, uh, people are looking for contact information. I would highly recommend uh, that just go to the site, okay, uh, cyber.gc, just Google uh, Canadian Center for Cybersecurity, take a look at their site and the framework, and uh, all the information is there, including uh, Angela's email, and there's certain other uh, areas of specialty that you might be uh, uh, interested in as well. They've got a great website now, and it's easy to navigate. Just like Karen Wetzel, the previous um, presenter who came from the U.S. National Institute for Science and Technology, they also have a very good um, uh, website. 
and it's based on the National uh, Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. And uh, the Canadian version is, uh, is basically a derivative of that nice framework at the top. And overall, just so that you remember, there's more than, just in North America alone, there are more than 750,000 vacancies in the field of cybersecurity. So if you're a cybersecurity expert, that's a good place. But it's not just in the cyber security, the physical, it's also in the policy making. And uh, as we re previously had with um, uh, the folks from the open group, um, Altas and John Linford, they basically specified it, it's going to be really a multidisciplinary show. And in the future, everybody's going to have to be, have a certain awareness and role and responsibility in the field of uh, securing businesses and uh, institutions and government uh, agencies uh, from cyber attacks. Well, anyways, this concludes the overall conference. Thank you ever so much for attending. I hope that, um, okay, I hope that you found it useful and I hope to see you again next year. Um, we've got your name on a list. So as a consequence, if there's any updates or what's ha our, uh, availability of items, we will uh, let you know. Uh, but anyways, hopefully you found that conference. And if you have any comments, don't be afraid to go conferences at isaca.ca and, um, uh, you know, isacaottawa-ca and uh, or just go to the registration link and then you can basically um, uh, submit your comments. We'd be looking forward to it. And if you want to volunteer to help, that'd be even better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a lot of volunteers. We had 52 speakers this year, okay, which is uh, quite the change. So to all of you, thank you. Have a great weekend. And if you're interested in the open source journal for digital transformation in government, think about it tomorrow from nine to 12. Even if you just want to find out what's happening, that's great. If you want to participate or contribute, you're more than glad. We're looking at a very... Um, shall we say, diverse offering. And we're going to be addressing things like security, uh, but at the enterprise level, okay, all dimensions. So take care. Have a good day. It's been a, and thank you very much for participating.